Okay, first grade, here we are, back with Ramona and Bezos. And if you remember when we left off, Ramona had taken herself to the basement and was eating the apples. But if you notice the picture, she's only taking one bite out of every single apple because she says the first bite is the best bite. Let's keep reading and find out what happens. But the first bite tastes best, exclaimed Ramona reasonably as she reached into the box again. Beezus had to admit that Ramona was right. The first bite of an apple always did taste best. Ramona's sharp little feet were about to sink into another apple when Beezus snatched it from her. <gasps> That's my apple, screamed Ramona. It is not, said Beezus angrily, stamping her foot. One apple is all you're supposed to have. Oh, I'll just wait till Mother finds out. Ramona stopped screaming and watched Beezus. Then seeing how angry Beezus was, she smiled and offered her an apple. I want to share the apples, she said sweetly. Oh, no, you don't, said Beezus, and don't try to work that sharing business on me. That was one of the difficult things about Ramona. When she had done something wrong, she often tried to get out of it by offering to share something. She heard a lot about sharing at nursery school. Now what am I going to do, Beezus wondered. I promised Mother I would keep an eye on Ramona, and look what she's gone and done. How am I going to explain this to Mother? I'll get scolded, too. And all the apples, what can we do with them? Beezus was sure about one thing. She no longer felt mixed up about Ramona. Ramona was perfectly impossible. She snatched Ramona's hand. You come upstairs with me and be good until Mother gets back, she ordered, pulling her sister up the basement stairs. Ramona broke away from her and ran into the living room. She climbed onto a chair where she sat with her legs sticking straight out in front of her. She folded her hands in her lap and said in a little voice, oh, Don't bother me. This is my quiet time. I should be resting. Quiet times were something else Ramona had learned about at nursery school. When she didn't want to do something, she often insisted she was supposed to be having a quiet time. And there's a picture of Ramona having her quiet time. Beezus was about to say that Ramona didn't need a quiet time because she hadn't been playing hard and Mother had said she had already had a nap. But then she thought better of it. If Ramona wanted to sit in a chair and be quiet, then let her. She might stay out of mischief until Mother came home. Beezus had no sooner sat down to work on her pot holders, planning to keep an eye on Ramona at the same time, when the telephone rang. It must be Aunt Beatrice, she thought before she answered. Mother and Aunt Beatrice almost always talk to each other at this time of day. Hello, darling. How are you? asked Aunt Beatrice. Oh, Aunt Beatrice, cried Beezus. Ramona has just done something awful, and I was supposed to be looking after her. I don't know what to do. She told about Ramona's hiding in the cellar and biting into half a box of apples. And Beatrice laughed. <laughs> Leave it to Ramona to think up something new, she said. Do you know what I'd do if I were you? What? asked Beezus eagerly, already feeling better because she had confided her troubles to her aunt. I wouldn't say anything more about it, said Aunt Beatrice. Lots of times little children are naughty because they want to attract attention. I have an idea that saying nothing about her naughtiness will worry Ramona more than a scolding. Beezus thought this over and decided her aunt was right. If there was one thing Ramona couldn't stand, it was being ignored. I'll try it, she said. And about the apples, Aunt Beatrice went on. All I can suggest is that your mother might make applesauce. This struck Beezus as being funny, and as she and her aunt laughed together over the telephone, she felt much better. Tell your mother I phoned, said Aunt Beatrice. I will, promised Beezus, and please come over soon. When Beezus heard her mother drive up, she rushed out to meet her and tell her the story of what Ramona had done. She also told her Aunt Beatrice's suggestion. Oh, dear, leave it to Ramona, sighed Mother. Your aunt is right. We won't say a word about it. Beezus helped her mother carry the groceries into the house. Ramona came into the kitchen to see if there were any animal crackers among the packages. She waited a few minutes for her sister to tattle on her. Then when Beezus did not say anything, she announced, I was bad this afternoon. She sounded pleased with herself. Were you? remarked Mother calmly. Beezus, I think applesauce would be good for dessert tonight. Will you run down and bring up some apples? When Ramona looked disappointed at having failed to arouse any interest, Beezus and her mother exchanged smiles. I want to help, said Ramona, rather than be left out. Beezus and Ramona made four trips to the basement to bring up all the bitten apples. Mother said nothing about their appearance, but spent the rest of the afternoon peeling and cooking apples. After she had finished, she filled her two largest mixing bowls, a casserole, and a bowl of her electric mixer with applesauce. It took her quite a while to rearrange the contents of the refrigerator to make room for all the applesauce. 
When Beza saw her father coming home, she ran out on the front walk to tell him what had happened. He, too, agreed that Aunt Beatrice's, Aunt Beatrice's suggestion was a good one. Daddy, shrieked Ramona when her father came in. How's my girl, asked father, as he picked Ramona up and kissed her. Oh, I was bad today, said Ramona. Were you, said father, as he put her down. Was there any mail today? Ramona looked crestfallen. Uh, I was very bad, she persisted. I was awful. Father sat down and picked up the evening paper. There's Ramona and Beezus. Oh, hard to see. And her mom making applesauce. I hid from Beezus and I bit lots and lots of apples, Ramona went on insistently. Mm-hmm, remarked Father from behind the paper. I see they're going to raise bus fares again. Lots and lots of apples, repeated Ramona in a loud voice. They raised bus fares last year, Father went on, weeping at Beezus from behind the paper. The public isn't going to stand for this. Ramona looked puzzled, and then disappointed, but she did not say anything. Father dropped his paper. Something certainly smells good, he said. It smells like applesauce. Oh, I hope so. There's nothing I like better than a big dish of applesauce for dessert. Because Mother had been so busy making applesauce, dinner was a little late that night. At the table, Ramona was unusually well behaved. She did not interrupt, and she did not try to share her carrots the way she usually did, because she did not like carrots. As Beezus cleared the table, and Mother served dessert, which was Fig Newtons and, of course, applesauce, Ramona's good behavior continued. Beezus found she was not very hungry for applesauce, but the rest of the family appeared to enjoy it. After Beezus had wiped the dishes for Mother, she sat down to embroider her pot holders. She decided to give Aunt Beatrice the pot holder with the dancing knife and fork on it, instead of the one with the laughing tea kettle. Ramona approached her with big Steve the steam shovel in her hand. Beezus, will you read this to me, she asked. She thinks I'll say no, and then she can make a fuss, thought Beatrice. Well, I won't give her a chance. All right, she said, putting down her pot holder and taking the book, while Ramona climbed into the chair beside her. <sighs> big Steve was a steam shovel. He was the biggest steam shovel in the whole city, Beezus read. <laughs> Growled Big Steve when he moved the earth to make way for the new highway father dropped his newspaper and looked at his two daughters sitting side by side. I wonder, he said, exactly how long this is going to last. Just enjoy it while it does, said mother, who was basting patches on the knees of a pair of, of Ramona's overalls. Grr, said Ramona. Grr. Beezus also wondered just how long this would go on. She didn't enjoy growling like a steam shovel, and she felt that perhaps Ramona was getting her own way after all. I'm trying to like her like I'm supposed to, anyhow, Beezus thought, and I do like her more than I did this afternoon when I found her in the basement. But what on earth will Mother ever do with all that applesauce? Tomorrow we'll start my favorite chapter of this book. It's chapter five, A Party at the Quimby's.